embedded in any long tradition of glasses is all of this just tremendous amount of knowledge. And if you're an educator, one of the things that is your job in, in an academic situation is to go and unravel all of the information out of those traditions and gain insight. It's good, Russ. There's like so many aspects about teaching that I love. When you have to teach something, you have to understand the material in a in, a, in kind of a different way than just being able to do it. And then I'm just going to go and put on a little random trail of clear, and wherever this clear goes, my piece won't reduce, and I'll end up. There are things that you understand, and you understand on an intuitive, you know, wordless level. When I'm blowing it, it goes and opens up the cracks so they don't go and seal back together again. And then there's the whole turning it into words is like something completely different. Okay, so glasses are good. So I'm rapidly cooling the outside and it cools so fast that it gets... You know, it's this puzzle that I really, really kind of like to do. And, you know, your understanding of the material like changes when, when you have to go and give yourself the challenge of doing that. There's five characteristics of glass that I need to understand, right? And they are heat and the force of your breath. Yeah, pressure or the force of your breath. Viscosity. Viscosity, and it has to do with what do you, how do you guys see viscosity? How it drops. Yeah, how it drops. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for when I'm looking for um, heat. My teacher, Mark, let's do that. Mark is, Mark's phenomenal glass blower, and he's taught me everything I know, so. He's a man, I mean, anything that you see that's that's over the top or it's super nice to like, man, Mark must have made that. There's choreographed dance that happens with glass on two levels. The dance that you and the glass have, where you are working with the material. And then there's also choreography that goes on when you're trying to make a, a more complicated piece with all of your assistants. Everyone has to know what's going on. Everyone needs to know what the next step is and make things that probably wouldn't have been possible. Paddle down lower, I would have to say Mark surprised me when he was still in high school. Might not have been obvious to say, wow, this guy's going to be a great glass blowing teacher. But there you go. 40, 50 years. Oh, that's he came over and I first met Hugh when I was oh, maybe cool. 16 or 17, and I was a junior in high school. Kind of came off as sort of strict and authoritarian, but you know, I, I always kind of understood that there's this kind of softer side to him. Now I'm a studio glass artist on the Big Island after having had a career as a, as a teacher at Punahou School. One of the features of that teaching career was having started a glass blowing studio in 1972 that we believe was the first and only curriculum high school program uh, in the nation. And same move, you want to set your jack line one more time. Keep it turning on center. You know, the glass shop, you know, it didn't start off big, it started off small, and he really was one of the people who was responsible for really building up this program. One of the requirements that we had when we started glass blowing is that you had to bring your bottles from home. Your mayonnaise jars and your pickle jars and your ketchup bottles and stuff, you had to bring them in. And we smashed them up and that's what we melted. So we were recycling uh, early on. I actually have a question. Have you had any professional glass blowers come yeah. from one of them? Yeah. Yes. 
Uh, Mike Mortara has his studio on the Big Island. He was a class of 79, which was Obama's graduation year. Yeah. Um, and so he was the first one who actually stuck with it and created his own professional studio. In the 80s, Boyd Sugiki, Lee Miltier, Mark himself. So yeah, there's a 10 or a dozen people for whom this created their, their way of making a living. There may have been Early on, it didn't really compute for me that I was an artist. You know, I was fairly good at drawing, but you know, it wasn't something that came easy to me. But I was really, really good with my hands. Like, I took apart things like crazy. But when I got into that glass class, that's when things kind of changed for me. There were all of these things that kind of just drew me in. The light that it gave off had these tools that you were using. I've always been able to use tools. Mark wanted to do art. What can I say? I went into music. And my husband said to him, this was something that was common theme over our dinner table was, if you can find something you truly like to do and you can make it your life's work, there's nothing better than that. So when Mark says, I'd like to go to art school, of course, it was a no brainer. And so we encouraged him to do that. A lot of my early work was a result of the way that I was studying art in academia. A lot of it had um, some pretty strong conceptual ties. I was sort of living a double life. I had my life in the hot shop where I would be making, you know, utilitarian objects. And, and that made me really happy. And then I would have this conceptual work that I was always re working really hard on. But, you know, I have always been drawn back to objects of utility. You know, when I was in art school, it, it wasn't exactly, it wasn't exactly frowned upon, but it wasn't super encouraged either. But when I'm teaching someone to blow glass, the simplest objects have so much value to people when they make them. My basic reason for leaving is I had that itch to really just focus on my own work while I still had the mind and body to do it. I'm glad I did. I would not have wanted to look back and say I didn't do that. It hasn't been easy. There were times that if I hadn't known what was gonna happen, I might have chickened out. Hey. It's as done as it's gonna get. I had a glass studio in upstate New York. I got a call one day from Puno. They let me know that um, Hugh Jenkins was, was about to retire, and he asked me if I wanted the job. Thinking about it, you know, it's not often that you end up going full circle around in things. So I figured I'd try it out for a couple of years and see how it went. And now I've been here like 17 years. <laughs> when I left teaching here, I felt I really left the program in the hands of somebody that was energetic, inspired. His, his way of teaching is, I think, technical. The program has grown. Well, we started with about 40 a semester in the 70s, and now I think Mark is handling as many as 80 a semester. We maybe average 100 kids a year, and we're 44 years in. Okay, do the math. You know, we got over 4,000 kids who've had some experience blowing glass. And that means there's 4,000 homes out there that have some really funny little collections of beginning pieces. This was my first one, and today I made two others. They're in the thing cooling. <laughs> I'm gonna give it to my mom, so <laughs> she'll like it. <laughs> she really wanted me to take glass. Okay, and then we can blow it up a little bit. And if you see it move, everyone starts off equal. Everyone, like I like to tell my glass class, sucks the same. <laughs> Everyone's terrible at it at the same, at the same level. Um, and you know, it's, sometimes it's um, not something that people are used to. It can be really, really, really humbling. That's good, not too much.
And when they really, really get into it, the, the kind of work that they make is something that I, I can't predict. And that's what really makes me really, really excited is, is when they go and take what I've taught them and go off in their own direction. I've been here since 8.30 and I probably make like four or five uh, paperweights and vases and I'll never get tired of it. During sophomore year, I did ceramics and I really love ceramics and out of the corner of my eye, I always could see the glass studio and that really, the glass and the heat and it really just drew me over to coming over here during junior year. School is really stressful. Ceramics is my way to decompress. Ceramics is really soothing and calm and peaceful and quiet. Glass is where I can get, get my energy out, my adrenaline, my excitement. Uh, it's two spectrums that I need to fill. A little too hot. Yeah. If I had wanted to stay in teaching longer, I would have stayed here. It was a fabulous place to teach. The students were about as good and attentive as any you'd ever, ever find. I'm, I'm really proud of the students who've become good teachers. I never really expected to be a teacher. I never really expected that was gonna be something that I would love to do. But I really feel fortunate to be at a place teaching something that I'm passionate about and being able to inspire other people in the place that inspired me to first go in, into, into glass blowing.